My name is Gwendolyn Page. Everyone calls me Jerry. I just want to say I feel so blessed to have this opportunity. I've been a realtor for 47 years. I was a realtor in New York before I got to Hartford here, to the Hartford area. Uh, I joined Person Person Real Estate. I um, believe it was 1979. Uh, and in 1980, I joined Merrill Lynch. So I've been busy, a busy body. My name is Vincent Fish. I got into business um, in 1986 as a part time person. And I work my way up and got my broker spice and I still part time because I work for two years in the business. I do two courses. You know, I was working at Travelers and the underwriting department. And that was about 1986. And um, normally, once you're 20 years, you usually have a day that you have people from different places who come. And uh, there was a space um, between the cafeteria. That was Main Street, 550 Main Street. That people come, carrier people, they come to the tables. And they, some are doing this, some are doing that. Finally, sitting at the table with their stuff. Um, and if we go over there, check her out. When I went over there, she said, Can I look at one of the books you think? It's a real estate. So really? So we talked to each other and I said, How long will it take me to be a realtor? Because time was my issue. And she said, um, as quick as you want. So, really? so I collected the information and I went to the point. Oh, as quick as you want to. Fill them up, send them back. I don't know how much it was that amount. And I'll um, send it to the information in one version. And then um, about a couple of weeks after, I got a call saying that they did have a class. I think you have to have either 12 or 15 people. To follow the class. It's like after the school, you know, just like we have teaching again. <clears throat> but they said that when you follow the class, they follow the melody. And it's going to be And they did. Because it's going to have to be honest now, though. But it's not. Three points. I'll still be short. But the last night, the last class, they did the final. They classify them, they have a certificate right here. They put in your name and somebody says, And home, my very first home, my husband and I went in and we had an agent who was recommended by a friend. And she took us in and we could smell the aroma of chicken and baking cakes every time. And each time we went in, we were so excited. But when we closed or at home, the stove didn't work. And then we found there were about three inches of hot water in the tub. So only one person could take a bath. So we had to put it in the water heater. Then we did put the water heater in. Well, lo and behold, we filled the tub with water. We had a water pool in the kitchen. And thank God my husband was handy. He went to the library and he fixed it. And I said, wow, the agent didn't even tell us she did share. I'm going to become an agent. And that was my reason for becoming an agent. I felt the need that if I did, I would help people by being honest. My name is Keith Pinker. I got a license in 1972. I became a member of the Board of Registers about 1975. The Marcus Insurance Agency and kept in the shorts real estate for the corner of 10th Street and Albany Avenue. My uncle used to buy insurance to do a high school company. And the day of graduating in the software, I used to have Marcus' son was in the same high school class. Where I and they said to me, 
At that time, most of us graduated from school. Either go, if you didn't get into college, you'd go to, to the, you'd go to the service. It was compulsory draft. You went to the service. But most of my people went to Vietnam or Korean, the Korean War before the Vietnam War. Where most of my graduates in class were wanted. But I got accepted at the State Technical College, and um, at that time, minorities did not have a real estate license. I didn't even realize it at the time. I was talking to the Marcus, and Mr. Marcus, Sam Shorts, handed me a little book and said, go study for the real estate license right out of high school. And I took the book and down there in real estate office, because downtown, and I did the street behind, in front of the Fox on the back wall, and I went down there, and they didn't get them to <laughs> I started to go hard from State Technical College doing electrical engineering. I passed it and got accepted in the college class doing electrical engineering. And one day I left upstairs and come downstairs on this large room, about 61 or 60 people in the room, taking the exam. Mm -hmm. And I went and asked the guy to take the exam, and I got a hundred on the test. This was like 1968. You know. So think of what you're going to do with this. Think of what you're going to do with it. <laughs> so I laughed, joked it off, and you know, I got it. <laughs> so I came back and I said to Mr. Peter Sam Shorts, I said, Mr. Shorts, I got the license. And he laughed and joked with me. I kept it for the two years when I took the book. So I said, Give me a book. Give me a book. Give me a book. My name is Keith Samuels, and I'm the only book of Perfect Solution Realty. I've been around for going on 33 years. When I came to America, I bought a house like within the first year. And the agent that represented me, Never told me to an inspection or anything like that. And I closed in the house in April, the end of April that year. I ran about November and I traveled in the thermostat. There was no heat in the house. And coming from a tropical country, I didn't know the heating system, so I didn't go there. I called a friend of mine who came over. He was also an electrician, and he said, probably it's a thermostat. So we went to a place called Builders Theaters. Builders Square. That was before Home Depot time. We bought a thermostat. We installed it. We tried it. Nothing. One of my neighbors came over. So he said, let's go check the furnace. He had a little plumbing idea. So we went down there. There was no motor in the furnace. And I had to put on a new roof like within two and a half months, three months after I bought the property. So that was a bad, bad experience. And I said, you know what? I'm going to talk to this guy about it. So I went to his office and he said, what do I know? He actually got an attitude with me. I said, okay. So I started talking to people, and people said, white people do a lot of this to black people. And I said, really? I said, I'm going to go to real estate. And I went to real estate. The first class that came up, I was calling around to see where I could go. And at the University of Harvard, they offered the class, and I went to the first class that came up. That's how I got into real estate. He said, I have to protect people. Actually, when I got in, you know, agents weren't pushing inspections. I think termite inspection was one of the big ones because they required a termite report for like government loans, FHA. I remember CHFA DAP was around. No, that came in after I but anyway, um, I pledged to myself that I would not sell a personal house unless they have a professional person who understands the structure, the mechanicals of the building. Um, I was phone called, and back then you, you could cold call without the restrictions. And I was calling, actually I had a 
two transactions that are on one. And instead of getting down, I used to say, well, all right, this is the deal. I'm going to call and for some listings. I was calling and I got a, it was in the west and a half, right? and one was in Avon. It was in Avon, it was far into And the guy asked me where my office was. My office was at 1975 Park Street in Hartford. Little tough neighborhood. And um, he said to me, who are you going to have in Park Street to buy my house? I didn't know how to answer. So I couldn't give him a good answer that would satisfy him. So he gave me a list. And I said, I have to. I have to be better than this because I lost three listings. I remember the listing agreement was one page at a time. And in the West End of Hartford on Beacon Street, the lady asked me what line seven of the current listing agreement was. It says, I didn't know. I said, How are you going to have me sign something that you don't know what it says? <clears throat> one thing I remembered was when I was here to say, I'm going to do a call to guys um, saying I want to do a listing with the pop money, big listing. And we had a kit that if you get a listing, these are the things that take measure of this, this, and this. So that looks cool, which we did. We start to measure the place, we start to show it. Then we had that for the group that for the same. I start choosing, choosing. Ah, and it was great. Trust me, we did everything correctly because we taught how to do that. Ten of you was And I knew. I knew the right one. I to see. Even when you had the license, banks did not allow minorities to get mortgages as easily. Um, there was another thing that had to be dealt with. It's um, black busting, where if a white person sold to a black person in a community, all the rest of them would get a call that white flag. They put the outside market, mm-hmm. drop the price, and get away from the area. Mm-hmm. So many of those experiences. In fact, Jackie Friday or whatever it is, it would be for 
and you would have to go in there, find your town, find whatever, and see for this suit. Or is it for suit your claim? That's how it used to be. And now I don't have to tell you guys what it is. <laughs> so that's from A to whatever it is. Let's look at the word first. They change things too, too often. By the time you get adjusted to something, or you get comfortable with, say, a technology, they change it so quickly. So you're always in an unnecessary learning process. So, so that's from the board point of view. The industry, it's great because there's a lot of positive, positive improvement in the real estate industry. For example, you have a lot of government programs now. And not only that, for example, let's look at it this way. Even if a person run into hardship with their mortgage, the government have programs. We had to go to the office and pick up keys. We had books for our MLS. So we had to look at a book and then go to the office, the office, pick up keys, take the keys back to the office, take or offer to the agent. So technology is wonderful. And I know when it came in, so many people my age said, I'm getting out. But I said, young people can do what I can do. And it's a blessing to be able to send a contact through in your pajamas. <laughs> so I can't get me late, but don't be late, you. Because if you come in, if it's a two o'clock and you come in five minutes to two or one, you can't be seven. And you might be, can't might not say to you, wait, you should know it's going to rush off faster. But I do come in five, ten minutes before, two or five. I hope you can push you. I have two or three questions, key questions that I'm going to get done with you. You can plan. And you don't have to go into the meetings and get the company. And I go into that. The Lord gave me to teach them how to keep their credit good. Oh my God, that's very cool. We tell stories of that for another man. But we do that. Never be late, whether in the office or in the field, or whatever it is. And that's what I do, and I preach it. When I can treat people well, do unto others, you will have that do unto you. Treat, don't ever miss you, oversell. Treat the clients as if they you the way you like to be treated. Not all of them are going to appreciate, but you do what you can. Let others do what they want. Job is to do the best job you can. Treat them the way you would like to be treated. If you think the deal is in good time, and it wants to go down bad about it. If you treat the client well, long after they have had the health, you don't remember them, they're going to tell somebody, go see this, I think I'm not here. Yeah. I hear it too many times, they never remember the face. The best advice I think I can give, a, especially a new agent, is work on yourself. Work on your skills of handling objections. Agents have to develop a very high skill level to really do well in this business. Because, you know, 2% of the top agents make about 80% of the money in the business. People are hard time, yes, I know it's not easy for everybody to just jump culture and give up their life to do it. You can. But if you're going to have a hard time, you have to have a high level of time management skill. Just don't tell them you're going to call back and don't call back. You have to. Anything you say you're going to do, you got to do it. Because people are watching. My advice would be invest in your education. Know the market. It is so important to know the market. And don't worry about the fact that you're a minority. You're selling yourself, and people, when you're good, do not worry about what color you 
I, I would say to them, just trust, trust God, get the knowledge you need, and work hard. You know, get the necessary tools that we have to work with because we have so many tools. You're given them. If you use them and you gain confidence, you go out there, you can compete. And you don't have to run. We respect you, fellow agents. Be kind and help. And it comes back. That's the only thing that I can tell you.